got to remember this. Because you never know when you get a return client. You know, you got to remember this stuff. Yeah. Take, you know, I'll, don't forget that if you ever want to try this. <laughs> it's not that hard, really. <laughs> get the book. Get the book. OK, so Jessica, what's your issue? What can we help you with? I have a lot of issues. <laughs> so I don't know what the best one is. Maybe you should pick. All right, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll pick. Well, okay. okay. Well, d well, I would say before, before we, turn okay. it, we turn it to the, uh, the group, uh -huh. I think that um, the thing that really is, has the most emotional weight for you is the one you should pick, if you can, if you can identify what well, that is. Well, I was thinking when... Not the heavy one. We want the heavy one. <laughs> I was thinking about the fact that my family just doesn't like me, or I feel like they don't like me. You feel like your like family doesn't family, like you? Like the whole family, like, yeah, doesn't like me. Or I think that's worth talking about. But that just happened. Yeah, though. we want to hear about that. All right. Because <laughs> so I was really at Thanksgiving and it happened. So, again. You really feel like your whole family doesn't, doesn't like you. Okay, so l l let's just hear about your family structure. So you have two. <laughs> so wh what are you talking about? Like your bro how many brothers, sisters, uh, that kind of thing? I have thing? a brother. An and older, a mother, younger. Um, younger brother, a mother, and a father. But not my immediate family as much as, like, my extended family. Like aunts and uncles, cousins? Yeah, aunts, uncles. Everybody older than me doesn't like me. Like the younger people like me. Uh huh. So maybe an authority issue if we were really going to get down to, if we were going to define it uh, narrower? Maybe. Do you feel like that way with your family or do you feel that way with all people who seem older? Yeah, yeah. Because here's, here's, here's a thing. Here's, here's what I'm thinking. If, if it's really a, a, f a thing with your family, right, then we would focus more on your family dynamic. But uh -huh. since it seems like your extended family, that seems like a grayer area. But however, if you had an authority figure with people older, that would probably have more to do with your parents, probably your father, and which relationship we'd want to talk about then. Oh. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Because if it's more about your father, that's going to affect you with with in out in the world with people who are older. So what do you, what do you think? What do you think? I think it it's is? authority because I don't like authority. It. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Authority. She's got a problem. I don't get along right. with some of my professors either. Oh, okay. So let's talk about your primary authority figures, mom and dad. So what is your relationship with your parents like? Um. <laughs> you know your parents. Yeah, I know. You've seen them? I know. I'm just trying to be song? honest. I'm thinking. Okay. Um, Take your time. We have 11 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's two. How see. many minutes do we use up already? We used up four. Four minutes already? You better hurry up. Okay, okay. So um, my dad and my mom and dad are divorced. Okay. And so they both live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And so I don't see them that often. But right. I do go out down there. My mom ignores me and... My dad and I have a better relationship than we did than when we were growing up. How old were your parents? How old were you when your parents divorced? I was 17. So, I went you, to college. Were you away divorced. at college? No, no. It happened like the end of senior year, and then I went off to college. The end of senior year, and your brother was still at home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So your mother, so now they're divorced, but what was it like when you were growing up? Like, what was the dynamic like in your household? Did your mom work? No. Or was she mm -hmm. home? Yeah, she was home, but then I think she was planning on getting the divorce early because she went to nursing school. Oh. Like, um, that's the, when that's I was, like, sign 15 or Signing whatever. up for nursing school yeah. is the first step. Yeah. So it's nurses, you know, they're all like, I'm getting away from this guy. I'm going to go out. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to nurse. She was going out on the town Instead of getting paid for nursing my husband, I'm going to get a job doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> okay, so your mom started getting a job. Yeah. And um, before that, she was at home. And then yeah. what about your father? He was a computer programmer. Around the same time, I just realized he got laid off, so he didn't really have a job. So around the same time your mom went to work, he... She was going to school. She was going yeah. to school. And he got laid off. Well, that yeah. might have had something to do with why she was going to school, because if he wasn't going to be earning money, right? Yeah. How long was he out of work? Was he out of work a lot? Yeah, kind of. He never exactly went back to work. So that's part of the problem. So how does he earn money today? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm serious. Like, we don't know. Uh -huh. um, 
I but if you get he does taxes connection. sometimes. He does my taxes. Um, that doesn't pay, does it? it but it helps me. It's so we have a good relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Um, well, that 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 must have been really. That sounds really kind of difficult. I mean, that sounds really unstable. I mean, that sounds that sounds very difficult. Yeah. But I, I want to get down to the authority oh, yeah, issue. The authority. Let's just talk about how, because it's usually the father, you know, right? The fa father is the authority issue. So let's see. What was your dad like as far as like being in charge of you, telling you what to do, and well, he did have like temperament you. issues. Like I never thought yelling was a bad way to deal with things until you get older because my dad would like yell a lot and my mom would yell you know or you get sent to your room when you're little or so were, did you have any fear of your parents either one yeah I think like you always like I was really really good kid growing up like I never got in trouble or anything so. probably maybe because you were partly afraid yeah yeah that's what does it otherwise kids are brats so um, uh, <laughs> So anyway, oh, yeah. I just want to hear about like the level yeah. of uh, the level of discipline. Like what? W like I want to hear if like your relationship to authority. So I want to hear about how your parents disciplined you. What you like? Whether you were watched more closely, not allowed to do things that other kids. What would happen? Did your brother get in trouble? What made you? Yeah, so he was good? really bad. So he so, probably had yeah. an authority issue too. Yeah, yeah. So like, what would happen? What would happen if somebody got in trouble? If he got in trouble? Um, you get sent to your room or grounded. Or, um, yeah, like, you, you get plans taken away from you. Like, if you're supposed to go to the mall, you weren't allowed to go. You, you know what's really interesting about what Jessica's talk, the way Jessica's talking about this, though? You're talking about it in a very detached way, <laughs> you know? Like, right? Like, she's not saying how you felt. Like, how okay. did it feel? How did it feel? Like, you know, you're talking about... I felt about angry. <laughs> No, I know, but I mean, but, but what yeah, was the no. emotional impact? Emotional. Like, um, tell me a story. Isn't there one okay. story from your childhood where you did something wrong and got in trouble that you remember? Yeah. What, what was it like? What happened? Yeah, I was really bad in fifth grade. And mm -hmm. um, there was this kid, and, like, we picked on him or whatever at the playground. And we got, like, a referral, which is, like, where you get a pink slip sent home and your parents have to sign it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so referrals are usually a positive. I was so scared. <laughs> like if this kid is really bad. <laughs> if you need a bad kid, <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was like a detention. A referral has anyone? Uh, that's not part of my culture. Anybody else? No, no. You how you know about referrals? Referrals like it's pink slip, and so I had to get this. I've never had one before, right. and I was like really. I was always like straight-A student, really good, so right. I had to go get it signed by my dad and mom, and so I was like, what do I do, you know, oh. and I was so afraid of them, but, like, for some reason, I thought the referral was funny, and so, like, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't too. stop laughing every time we talked I about it. I think it's funny, So, too. in fifth grade, I wore, like, this bionator thing, which was, like, you know, it made your mouth, like, it was like a retainer or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it would stop you from laughing if you put it in. Cause it uh, like, uh, and so I wore that. I remember because <laughs> I was so afraid of my parents when I gave them the referral. That you so would like, laugh. Yeah. And you, you know what's but, really interesting about this that story though that Jessica's telling. You know what's really interesting is that I'm now beginning to think that maybe Jessica didn't have a whole lot of respect. Maybe you didn't have a lot of respect for your parents. <laughs> because you know, maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't have any authority with you, <laughs> and maybe it seemed like a joke when you went to ask them. Do you think yeah. that's possible? Yeah, I thought and it so was funny. You and I, but I felt really guilty because I thought it was funny. Right, like, because I you didn't laughing, want them to yeah. know that you didn't have respect for them. So maybe what's really going on is that you don't have a lot of respect for authority because maybe you didn't really respect your parents, and so when somebody tells you to do something, it's hard for you to take them seriously. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, doesn't that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Do you have, do you, do, do you Maybe. like, does your father had trouble? Like, I guess the classic thing is the father, you know, goes to work and earns the money and all that stuff. Like, your father wasn't really doing that, right? Um, did your parents, yeah. did your parents not treat each other with respect? Did they not take each other seriously? No. Uh -uh. Were you, like, in the role of the adult more? Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Oh wow. So you know, so 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 that's like a tough role. That's a tough role for a kid. You know, it's not fair to have that much responsibility. And maybe you know, but it's understandable because you know, I can see like if you're the one who's always doing the right thing, and your parents, you know, say have trouble keeping employed or something uh -huh. like that, and then they're there judging you. It probably is hard to 
take, I can understand how a kid would feel that way, you know? Yeah. I think it's like, we were saying, it's like all my parents' fault, you know? Like, it, well, I mean, like blaming right. isn't good. Blaming isn't good. It, it's, it's, it's a behavior that is the reason you feel this way now as an adult. But now, that, now it's you with the behavior. It's no one's fault. That's what happened. Now you have the behavior. So I think that out in the world, the thing to do with that is to identify people. First of all, we have to respect authority because that's the way the planet is set up, at least in America. And probably more so in other places. So it's very self-preserving to respect authority under any circumstances and hopes in advertising. So she could really go on about that. Um, so it's just, OK, so it's practical to, to, to do that. But then also, I mean, it would be good if you could find authority figures that you really feel some respect for and you could learn something from because older people do have experience and stuff like that, and you know, and there are people in authority that actually de probably deserve to be in authority. Like I'm sort of an authority. <laughs> yeah, ah. and I read it, you know, and I have all the credentials, so I do deserve it. Okay, so anyway, okay. Jessica, yeah. So yeah, Sometimes. be careful with respect to authority. You wind up in trouble one way or the other, and we don't want to get any more referrals. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To a prize. Ah, oh, the makeover. Ah, <laughs> oh. the makeover. Maybe you should do that and then come back. You know, come use the makeover kit and then come back. You know, come back like next time and we'll see how, how you look. If you, you know, made your. You know, see if you um, have more authority with makeup on. <laughs> Being made over. All right. That's interesting. You know, that's interesting because most people think that authority problems with their family is usually fear of authority, but it's actually could be that you have absolutely no respect for them and no respect for authority. That's reasonable too. I learned something. That's good. We never had one of those before. All right. I think it's time for a guy. A guy. All right. Uh, part of the, we have to like change stuff here. This is this is you know. This is a big TV show we're doing. Are you? It's the tape. They have to change. Is everybody changing their tape? And what's the psychological meaning of that? You know, and if this was a real TV show, they'd have some comedian come out and, and, and do a routine. What are, we what are you trying to tell me here? What? <laughs> Say it again. I was just reminding you about the Freud doll. Oh, okay. For later. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Look at this. We got professionals working here. Isn't that amazing? They have actually probably more. You have actual people with training, even if it's not training in psychotherapy. It's so dark in here. Are we done? No, oh, it's all right. Are we? Thanks. All right. Oh, we're rolling? OK, we're just waiting for, for our, our, next, our next contestant. <laughs> Hi, your name Hello. is? Nathaniel. Wait, Nathaniel. Have a couch. So Nathaniel, you know what? Nathaniel, I'm going to tell you something, you guys. Nathaniel's actually a repeat customer here. I've actually did, did Nathaniel at the last, at the last psychotherapy uh, sessions. Um, that was great. Did anybody here remember that? Any, anybody here remember what happened last time? It was great because uh, Nathaniel came with this, this, this chick. And uh, it turns out, first he came up, and then she came up. And then it turned out that the two of them had some, you don't mind me telling everybody. Although you're supposed to be confidential, I guess. But <laughs> so, so it turned out that the deal was, it was wonderful. It turned out the deal was is that Nathaniel wanted to date Stephanie, and Stephanie was sort of, uh, I, I think that we got the feeling that she was sort of 
kind of wanted to date Nathaniel, but was sort of afraid to, or maybe didn't, maybe she didn't want to, I don't know. So what happened there? So what, that, is that what you want to talk about, or you want to talk about something else? No, actually, that, that is what that I want to talk you, about. Yeah. Does everybody uh, get what happened? Do you want to, do you want to add anything? Because if we're going to talk about that, you better tell the first part. Oh, okay. Tell the first well, part. Well, first you of tell all, it. I'm an actor, and I came up with uh, issues concerning whether or not I wanted to stay in New York, close to my family and friends, et cetera, et cetera, or make the move to Los Angeles like a lot of my friends right. have. You, get, you only get 11 minutes, and, so uh, make it Long story short, uh, we decided that I should make the move because it would be the best thing for me. So uh, then I went in the audience, and then Stephania came up, and uh, she talked about Stephania. the same issues, about wanting to stay or leave. And Lisa dug underneath the surface and found that yeah. uh, Steph was uh, basically full of shit. She's <laughs> language. But, yeah. Uh, I went for the throat. I went for the throat. I'm always trying yeah. to. Yeah. The issue was uh, whether or not she wanted to get closer, particularly to me. And as a result of being, uh, both of us being up here and revealing ourselves to the audience, we had a very big discussion uh, 48 hours ago. Oh, really? And that's All when right. I came up to tell oh, you about. good. I uh, wish she was here. She's not here? No, she's at a book club meeting. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, we're gonna a meet book club there. meeting and she could be here? That's so boring. Yeah, yeah, well. God. Well, I guess I, I guess I have good news, though. Um, okay, so what happened? Yeah, let's hear about it. Well, um, well, I guess you could say we agreed to disagree uh, because of the nature of my, my job and what I do and the fact that uh, as much as I would like a relationship with her or a significant relationship, period, uh, my career, actually, at this point in my life, should take precedence. So, and because she does not want a relationship, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, we decided we're going to go like we had before, but we're going to open up more, particularly her. And, uh... What? Well, okay, I think I told you we only had sex once in the entire, it'll be a year next week that we've known each but, other. But that's and significant that they had sex. Yeah, well... I mean, they had sex, so... Once, July 5th. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> what time? Somewhere between 1 o'clock in the morning and uh, in the 8 a.m. the next day. Oh, was okay. Like, yeah, I could get a couple months worth. Anyway, um, <laughs> we, we did it again, just uh, the 5th of December. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven months later. Whoa. So how was that? I, it was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm no closer to being her boyfriend or her. But you know, this is all very, very. This is all very, very confusing because um, you obviously have some sexual attraction for each other. Yeah, right? but we decided that we're not going to try to make something out of nothing. If she's not feeling that, and if my career doesn't permit, or my, my the way my life is going now, I, it's not conducive to a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Then maybe this is as good as it gets. So well, you know, remember what I was thinking about the last time you guys were here was we were sort of talking about how um, Stephanie, Stephania was sort of, we were talking about perhaps she was afraid about being involved because, um, you know, it's, it's actually in a way there's, it's, there's more control of being pursued than not actually giving in, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I was also saying that Nathaniel mm -hmm. was enabling her to do that by keep being chasing her or pursuing her, so to speak. So what I'm wondering about, what it's starting to sound like, it's sounding like the two of you have some dynamic where you're both comfortable um, being uncomfortable about being involved. No, I think I, think I got down to the, the nitty gritty. It's like she doesn't want the same things in life that I want. So as wonderful as I think she is, the best we could hope for is friends with, with benefits. So if the sex continues, great. If it doesn't, then I just get what I really want from someone else, and she just remains a friend, you know? She doesn't want to have kids. Eventually, I could be a dad, you know? Um, she doesn't necessarily want to give up her cats, and I, all my clothes are covered in fur. I'm just <laughs> tired of it. Uh, but, but you know I what? I want to leave New York. I think she's pretty cool where she is. and. Uh, you know, a lot of that may be true, granted, but I'm just saying to me, it sounds like uh, the two of you are looking for reasons to avoid getting involved. And maybe you don't want to get involved with each other, but I'm, I'm thinking that you two are preventing each other. You two are either preventing each other from being involved with each other or maybe a way station preventing each other from getting involved with other people outside the two of you. We discussed that issue, which is why... Uh, I'm going to continue dating like I had Good. 
And if she should ask me how it went, I'm going to give full disclosure without feeling as though I'm, I'm in a weird boyfriend-ish. Well, that's good. You're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Because, see, she said that, um, she, said that um, she, didn't, she had been hurt by somebody else and she didn't want to be yeah. involved with anyone. Mm -hmm. And that was like over a year ago. So, I, you know, that sounds... But, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm very... This doesn't sound... Because, like, when people, like, are really, like, into each other, it's like all that stuff, you know, doesn't matter. You know, when people... I mean, people wind up, like, years later going, what do you mean you didn't want to... You know, I mean, when people are really ready to have, we really want a relationship, the relationship is a priority, you know, fuck the cats. The cats don't matter anymore, right? That doesn't it sound like he's intellect, that they are intellectualizing? Like, so, we're not we buying it. We're not buying it. Okay, audience. No, no, why are we not buying it? You're not, you're not buying it? Okay. So okay. should I just stop seeing her altogether? No, no, no. We're not at telling you what to do. We're not telling you what to do. We're trying to help you find the emotional truth. Like, what's really going on here? I like her, but it's going nowhere, so I'm not going to force the issue. Are I, you, I are you, you sound me. like you're angry about it. Are you angry about it? It's frustrating, but I wouldn't say angry. I mean, I had a great time the last time we were together, and I'm going to see her later tonight, you know, so. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, well, you know what, Nathaniel, I'll say this. I'll say that you sound like more, more, and you're the one who came, you know, so, you know, yeah. you're the one who came, good for you. Yeah. And I just think that it sounds like you're more together about this because you're saying that you're ready to, like, date other people and all that. Absolutely. If I could find, if, if someone were into, my, into me as much as I were into her, uh -huh. Yeah, that we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be having this discussion with you now. You know, she'd right. simply be a friend that I'd be telling her about the great woman I just met, you know, and, she, and hopefully she'd be the friend that I wanted to be and wishing me luck. Right, you know? but right. So but the dynamic does sound unhealthy on both your parts, right? Does mm -hmm. the dynamic, do you, do you guys think so? I think the dynamic just sounds unhealthy because you're both avoiding, it's taking up room where you two could be dating other people. And I think it, for her it's particularly unhealthy because... Mm -hmm. She's just basically shut down the shop. Right. Well, that's why I'm, I'm going ahead with my plans right. to California. Right. See. Right. Yes. She's got and me for a limited good. time only anyway. You know, and then it's And you're bye probably bye. getting a little resentful, as well you should be, as well as would be, not should be, but well it would be reasonable because, you know, you're offering, you're offering her a great guy. I mean, you're a great guy. You're oh, offering thanks. her, like, a really cool guy, you know. And, and, and an actor. He's cute. He's a nice guy. He's, you know... Good verbal skills, I mean, arti <laughs> emotionally articulate. So, you know what I'm saying? You're offering her a good deal, and she's taking a pass on it. What a moron. Mm. So you must feel sort of resentful, right? Yeah, damn it, I do. <laughs> and you okay. should. So what I'm saying is your relationship with her is taking up some valuable energy that you could refocus somewhere else, and mm -hmm. I think it would be a good time to start thinking more and more about refocusing that on on, you know, s somewhere else, whether you put it towards your career, which well, is a good thing, or whatever. I think it's a good time to start refocusing that towards something else. And I also think that um, you're enabling her to stay in the stuck, shut down place that she is, which isn't good for her. How am I doing that still? Because you are still, you know, um, so, you know, it sounds like you're still fulfilling some of her needs. As a friend or whatever, yeah. does she, she knows, yeah. I mean, you're still interested in her in some, right? Yeah, but you know, I, I, realizing that she never wants to be a mom, and I do, I mean, that pretty much just shuts the curtain down there, you know? I, uh -huh. She stonewalled me, you know? Oh. That's not going to change, and nor is mm -hmm. my feelings for wanting to be a dad, so. You know, I mean, I'm not saying I could rush and get somebody pregnant right, right away, but, right. you know, down well, the I line. Well, I mean, I think if the <laughs> relationship was in a different place, that might be negotiated, right? I, I think, you know, people know. Do, right? People negotiate that stuff. She's happy with her cats. Those are her kids. So, so but what I'm saying is before you get really disappointed in, in the relationship, you mm -hmm. know, it's good to... Like, I mean, you know, I'm not saying, like, it's a bad relationship or that you shouldn't be, like, friends with her, you mm -hmm. shouldn't hang out with her. I'm just saying, for your own self, the more positive place to go is to try to refocus your energy mm. in um, other ways besides putting more of an investment. To, to really try to, to see her as a friend along with your other circle of friends instead of her being any focus. 
right? Does that make sense? Does anybody have any, anything to add to this? Please add it. She's just, you know, doesn't want to have kids or. Hmm? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's honest. just the vibe. He did, he did do that. that. He did do that. He did a private audience. Yeah. Did it, yeah. Did uh, anyone, anyone see that? I mean. Like, right? Oh, he did that. Right? You did, I wasn't yeah. there. Uh, yeah, you well, were there. You yeah. were there. Did yeah. you think so? Oh, yeah. You said you loved her? In front of everyone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, so see what I'm saying? What? So you probably like are hurt by that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As well, it should be. Matthew, you were nodding your head. Do you have anything to add to that? I bet you do. Yeah, I think so. That you just she said no, and she's not returning it. So you're doing a bad job, disservice to yourself by having anything to do with her besides being a friend, because you're just teasing yourself by knowing the dates of when you had sex with her and how great it was. Mm -hmm. You need to move away. Completely. And not just date other people, well, but course. date other people and not her at all. Don't see her tonight. She's stringing you along. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Don't see, don't see her tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's a, that's a tough stance out there. Wow. <laughs> don't see her tonight. You're with him. You're with the guy that said that, right? Is he, is he a cold guy like that? That's cold. No? no? Do you think he's kidding? He's <laughs> Oh, all right. All right. So anyway, um, does that, Nathaniel, does that make any sense to you, or, you, or is it, yeah, yeah? Yeah, I mean, what, what, what Matthew, Matthew said, Matthew, and then what, yeah. what the young guy here said, they, they, yeah. they both make a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess it's just hard to do, because, you know, sure. really good people are hard to find. I mean, eight million people in New York, and everybody's got emotional yeah. baggage. Yeah, but you I know. mean, you are, you know, this, this, it's not fair, to, you're not being fair to yourself, so... Yeah. yeah, it's mm. tough. It's tough, and, it, and it, I think it's painful. I think it's painful when you know you, you know you're you're you know you give yourself to you give something really valuable to somebody else, and it's like you can't imagine. But see that they don't want it. But see the thing is that I think, she, I think I wouldn't take it personally if I were you because I think she's just the kind of person and in a place that can't accept that mm. from anyone now, and so. You know, yeah, give it to somebody who really is ready to have that. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You're a tough guy. You're a tough guy. Help Thank yourself you. to, uh, to, uh, to a prize. To a prize. Yeah. Well, so what are you guys doing tonight? Uh, I'm going to meet her later tonight. We're going to go to a taping of a Colin Quinn. Oh, really? Show. Wow, my competition. <laughs> oh, wow, you're on the whole circuit. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to my I'm party. going to that. Yeah? <laughs> oh, wow. No, actually, I did see that once. Colin Quinn, he's... Is that show on the air? I believe it's like a, a taping, a pilot that would begin. Yeah, he already yeah. did a pilot. I would say he's doing maybe another it's a pilot. Maybe it's actual taping. Who knows? Yeah, so All right. Be there after this. All right. Uh, well, have fun. Oh, say I hi for picture, me. You look great. We took the tape off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know that. That's sh oversharing. All right. So you know what? You know what? It's time for now. Now it's time for us to look under our chairs and see who got the Freud action figure doll. And that's the next person that has to come up here. Oh, we got the Freud action figure. Come on up. Come on up. And you get to keep the figure, too. Oh. Oh, did you drop? What is that? Somebody dropped something there? Hi, come on up. Hi. Your name is? Christina. Christina. Hi, I'm Lisa. Lie down. All right. I'm going to read, I'm going to, before I get started, I'm going to read the quotes that go with the Freud action figure, because I always think they're so absurd. <laughs> this is a guy, this is all about psychotherapy, how Freud got taken so seriously, and they put these quotes on the back of the Freud, Sigmund Freud action figure card, and, uh, it's ridiculous. It's like, it sounds, so, it sounds so ridiculous that he's so revered. 
Neurosis seems to be a human privilege. God. I mean, God took himself too damn seriously. We could have, he should have been here and lighten up. Uh, and, and this one, everywhere I go, I find the poet has been there before me. I mean, what an arrogant guy. <laughs> here, you can have that too. Oh, All good. Right, there you go. All right, so... Uh, I'm very nervous. You are? Yeah. Uh, but we, we, these people love you. They're on your side. We're all here to help. But everyone else was like this. <laughs> See? They want to help you. What's your name? Christina. Christina, I know you just said that. But. Okay, so, okay, relax. But you can hold the doll if it helps you. Yeah, it's okay. This is better. Yeah? So anyway, okay, so uh, where are you from? Um, I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland. Silver Spring, Maryland. Somebody here from Silver Spring, yes. Somebody you go to high school with or something? Do you recognize this person? Oh my god! No? <laughs> okay, name, say, say something that's local in Silver Spring that oh only somebody else would know. Uh, 